This tutorial covers the cubic spline in AP Monitor. We're going to use this object to be able to model a nonlinear function and then be able to use that in an optimization problem. So an object in AP Monitor will add equations and variables and then we can access those with connections. So let's just first of all go ahead and go to the APMonitor.com website and then just select the try it online button and uh, let me just get a little bit of a shorter model here just so I, I can delete it easily. Okay, so these are just example models here. And I'm just going to put in here objects and then I'll do C equals C spline. Okay, and then end objects. And then I'll run it and then it'll give me my first error. Okay, it says that uh, the C spline data. C, okay, we need to create a new C.CSV. So if I had changed it to something like, um, you know, my function, something like that, we just need my function.csv. Okay, so it says create this uh, my function.csv, and that should be, you know, look something like this, okay, and, uh, you know, don't include that last uh, .csv here. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is just do this from the, uh, you know, we can, we can either create it ourselves and upload it to the server, or we can uh, actually create it within the AP monitor, okay, within the AP monitor um, uh, model here, and it will write it for us. So if I just do file, and then I have my function.csv. And then the very first one is going to be you know, like the x data and then y data. Okay, and if I do 0, 0 0.1, you know, 0 0.2, and I'll add another one there. And I just have to separate these by commas. You can have a program write this for you. Okay, and then here is my y data. So you're going to evaluate the function at different values and then feed this in. It's going to build the cubic spline for you. I'm just making up numbers here, but just as an example. Okay, so there is uh, my function. And then if you run it now, it's going to solve and it'll show you the solution. Okay, so let me just go ahead and copy this. Okay, I'll view solution results. I just had zero and zero. So x was by, uh, by default equal to 0. And uh, OK, so let me go and copy this back in. OK, when I hit the back, it, uh, it deleted that. But let's say I want to evaluate this at a different point. Then what I need to do is uh, create a new parameter. OK, and this is going to be x equals, let's say I want 0.75. Okay, and then I do end parameters, and then I'm going to create a new variable. And I'll just link that up, um, and I won't give it an initial guess. I'll have it tell it uh, tell us what that is going to be. Okay, so it'll calculate that from the cubic spline, and um, well, then what I'm going to do is is create some connections between those new variables I created and this uh, c-spline object. So then I create a connection section. Okay, in this case I'll put whatever's on the left is going to be the thing that uh, remains there. Okay, so you have my function dot x data and then y equals my function dot y data. Okay, and then I end the connection section. And now I should be able to evaluate this at 0 0.75. So it's going to be right in between these two right here. OK, and let me just go ahead and copy this because when I hit the back, it's going to uh, go away. And then when I um, show this, okay, it took two iterations. OK, there's the objective value. It's still 0. I'm not really optimizing anything. So there is my cubic spline approximation right there. Uh, it's going to be 2.78. Okay, so let's just look at that. Um, you know, if I
paste this back in. Okay, so I was 2.78. Okay, I extrapolated. I actually went outside of the, the bounds there. Let me try something kind of in between these two. So it should be between 1 and 2. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 0 0.3. Okay, so I'm just evaluating it at that. And let's go ahead and compute this again. Okay, solve successfully. And we'll view the solution results. So that was equal to uh, 1.41. So that's what the cubic spline told us. So now let's use this in optimization instead. And what I'll do is um, let's just create a new C, this C spline. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just open up this example file that you can download. I'll show you where to grab this one from. If you go to the uh, course or to the AP Monitor documentation, okay, and then off to the right here, you'll see objects. Now we're going to go and browse through our object list, and this one is the cubic spline. So just go ahead and select that, and at this link right here is where you'll find uh, you know this example problem okay so here's our you know y value okay it's this nonlinear function but let's suppose we only have values at these data points right here and we want to be able to still optimize over this function okay here's our approximation you can see it doesn't extrapolate very well that's one thing you got to watch out for on these cubic splines is that um, you know if you're outside of the the data then it's not going to extrapolate very well but right down here at the bottom is some example source code so we're going to start with this and then we'll modify it just to show some of the details about how to use this object okay just select the git code in the bottom right and that'll give you a format free version of it so you can copy it into your okay into your application into your script Okay, and then uh, what I'll do is let's just go ahead and, you know, we have this function right here, and we showed how to set up a new object, and you have C equals uh, C spline, so my object name is C, and then I need to create a C.CSV with all of my X and Y data. So if I change the name here, like to X data 1, then I'll just need to change the name of the variable that I'm connecting to. Okay, so whatever name you have here, it's going to create the independent variable with the first column of that, and then the dependent variable, the one that we're approximating with the spline on the right hand side. And, um, you know, the another thing about this is that these uh, x values right here, just in the first column, those need to be increasing. So if you have values that are not in order, uh, monotonically increasing, then it will also give an error. Okay, so I'm basically writing my model right here, as I showed in, this, uh, in that previous exercise. But now I'm going to have x as a variable. And I say that x is initially equal to negative uh, 0 0.5, has to be greater than negative 1. That's kind of the lower limit of my data set. And then less than 0.5. There's my upper limit. So I just included some constraints there. And th that's this function that we just talked about. So we're going to try to optimize on the red line. Now let's also, just for comparison, let's just include another, uh, another variable, which is w and then Z as well. Okay, and we'll maximize, I'll just include the original function just so we can compare it. Okay, it's so our original function. If we had it available, we wouldn't have to use the cubic spline, but we'll just say that Z equals one divided by one plus 25 times X squared. Okay, so there's our original function, but it's a function of W now instead of Z. So we have the original one and then also 
the cubic spline. So let's go ahead and just uh, compute this. It's going to write the model. As you see here, it's going to clear the prior application. It'll load the model. And then I have the steady state optimization mode set. And then it will solve it. It'll print the output. It'll retrieve the solution. And then let's just um, add a couple lines here. OK, this is our cubic spline solution. And then let's do our actual function solution. OK, and that's going to be W and Z. OK, so now let's go ahead and try this one. Um, I've included the original function, and we're also maximizing that one. It's going to find, hopefully, a point right off here to the right. OK, so we're going to find that solution right there. You can see that the cubic spline shifted slightly to the left just due to approximation error. But let's go ahead and try this now. Uh, if we run it, OK, so it's going to um, solve. It took uh, point zero one uh, five seconds and there you can see the the cubic spline solution which is you know just shifted slightly to the left the actual function solution is right uh, basically at zero and you can see the z value equals one